Okay, so we're going to have a look at um, different patterns of contraction in, in the glabella and how those might dictate our injection pattern. So there have been a number of studies over the years which have, which have um, basically documented these different patterns that we see basically when we ask a patient to make a frown. The paper that I like um, from 2012 basically gives six distinct patterns of contraction uh, in the glabella when someone makes a frown. I, w when you look at this, I think our standard five point injection process that we, you know, we've all used over the years is gonna be more than adequate to approach five out of six of these patterns um, from this paper. Uh, the one pattern where we will almost certainly need a different approach in order to get an adequate outcome for the patient is this omega pattern of contraction. And that's really what I wanna look at in, in more detail now. Okay, so what is the omega frown pattern? Um, so it, it's, a, it's, it's described as, as omega simply because when the patient uh, makes a frown, what you're seeing is a shape forming very similar to the omega symbol from the Greek alphabet. So you can see that uh, someone makes a frown, you get a situation where there is particular strength in, in the medial portion of the corrugators versus the lateral portion of the corrugator, along with simultaneous contraction of central low fibers of frontalis. That's really what's giving this pattern. So this, this pattern uh, of what we see when someone makes a frown as was really described way back. I mean, Charles Darwin, as far back as the 1800s, described this omega type appearance to the, to the frown complex of the glabella region when someone makes a frown. It was also described in the early 1900s by a well-known German psychiatrist, Dr. Otto Verreguth. Uh, so this is, this is not a new phenomenon um, and has been recognized and been around for a long time. Okay, so from our perspective, you know, why does this matter um, and how might we approach our treatment of this area versus how we might normally treat the glabella complex? Well, it, 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 it's only a slight variation in the sense that not only do we need to treat the, uh, the glabella, so the, the procerus and the corrugators in the way that we might normally, but we really need to add in some injections in order to target these low central frontalis fibers. And we've got to be careful. Uh, we've got to keep the injections um, at a low dose, basically. What we don't want to do is use a dose that is so high that it might actually instigate a medial browtosis, which is really getting away from the whole point of it for these patients. So typically what I like to do is to add in two or three injections into the low fibers of, of, uh, of the frontalis, which is being activated when someone makes a frown. So usually two to three injection points, just one unit of toxin per injection point, and that usually does the trick for these patients. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit like, subscribe, and share to see a bit more.